The next thing we're going to look at, which is also something that's highly recommended to have configured right now, and that is system updates. So if you go to systems and updates, and this is to perform a software update, and this includes a system and device patches that's currently available. So the Fireside can go out to the cloud and download all that, along with all of the vulnerability database, intrusion rules, and geolocation database. This is just to basically keep your system up to date and make sure that your system is up to date right from the beginning. This is why it's very important for the, the, you to make sure the Fireside system has access to internet 24 seven. Okay, so now that we under the product updates section, what we can do is to go ahead and click download update and this is for Fireside to go out to the cloud and download all the updates. You also have an option to manually upload the updates if you want to download those update files manually from cisco.com then you can do that and then upload it manually. Okay so we're just going to have that run in the background that might take a while for the system to pull out the update files and patches. So what we're going to do is moving on to the next tab right here but we're going to open it as a new tab. Okay, so the next tab over is rule updates and this is specific to the intrusion rules. So the first half is an option for you to upload the rule updates manually from a file that you downloaded separately or if you want to perform a on-demand update. So we'll do that in a sec, but first we want to configure recurring rule updates, which is also recommended so that way it will periodically go out and update the rules. So right here, click the Enable Recurring Rule Updates Imports, and you can choose your import frequency. So we're going to leave it as daily. So every day, let's say 1 o'clock in the morning, so 1 a.m., we want the system to try to download the updates. And then you also have an option right here if you want to apply those updates immediately after the download completes or import completes. If you have that box unchecked, then obviously the updates will be downloaded, but not apply to your intrusion policy. So just to make sure that we don't have any rules apply without our knowledge, we're just going to leave that unchecked. So click save. And before moving on, we want to run a manual update. So download new rule updates from support site and click import. Also, we're not going to apply it here. Click import. So that we can just have the system run in the background and we'll come back and check on that later. Moving on to the next tab, which is your location updates. Again, another type of update, and this is regarding geolocation information in the system. We'll do the same thing here, enable the recurring weekly updates. Let's say Saturday, same thing at 1 a.m. Okay, click save and since it's a fresh install, we'll go ahead and run on-demand update on that as well. So click import. So for this one, as soon as you click that, the update process will be queued as part of the task. And we can always go to the system monitoring and open a task status. So this is all the tasks that's been queued and potentially running or if it's been completed. So you can see right here for source file geolocation update, it is the status is currently running. Okay, so we'll come back and check on that later. So while our systems are performing updates right now, let's move on to the next part of recommended configuration. And this will be under policy, action, and alerts. So right off the bat, you probably want to set up different method of alert so that way when you later on configure with this policies then you will immediately have those alert methods available to you okay so click on that and we can go in and click on create alerts and you can see fireside systems support three types of alerts here email snmp and syslog so depending on how you want your alert delivered um, you can pick the appropriate option let's go ahead and set up all three of them so first let's create email alert and the name of this will be LM alert email. Okay, the two, it will be our security alert at labminutes.com. And from email, let's just use itself. And for the relay host, you can see it's been, it's been pre-populated because this has already been defined under the system policy previously. But you can click on it and it's probably going to redirect you back to the system 
right there policy page as well for you if you want to modify or set that up. But since we already have that set up, we should be good to go and click save. And this is why we basically did the configuration in that order with the system policy first because this there's a dependency for this alert to have this in the TP server setup. Okay, so type email, it's enabled by default, so we're good. Next is our SNMP alert. We'll call this one LM alert SNMP. Just gonna stick with the version two here just to keep it simple. We're just gonna pretend that our domain controller here is our trap SNMP trap server as well. And the community string, we're just gonna do Cisco. Okay, although we're not gonna really do SNMP or trying to receive SNMP alert, but just to show you configuration that you need. All right, next, uh, the last type of alert is syslog. So same thing here. If you do lm alert syslog host is 162.16.32.40, which is our domain controller. Let's leave the facility and severity to alert and click save. All right, so all those were saved. Now that we have the alerting methods set up, we can actually go back where we kind of skip under the health monitor alerts because back then or earlier on this uh, video, we still ha haven't really had those alerts set up. So you can see now these under the alert columns has been populated with the three methods of alerts we just set up. So let's uh, go ahead and let's say that you want to monitor the appliance heartbeat. So if there is a failure in heartbeat, we want to know about it. So let's call this one alert name is LM device heartbeat. Okay, so the severity, we want to know if there's anything from critical warning, error, and recovery. You can hold down the control key and then select the multiple options for that. And the threshold right here, which is optional, is the time before the event counter will be reset. Okay, and by default is five minutes. We're just gonna leave it at the default and click save. Here, if there's anything related to appliance heartbeat that's matched the severity, we'll be receiving email for it. Okay, let's do another one. And let's say you want to monitor the CPU usage of your Fireside system. So we'll call this one LM Fireside CPU. And we also, well, we only interested in, let's say, critical and warning uh, of the CPU usage. Same thing, we want to receive the email for that. Default threshold, save. And just like that, now we have two types of alerts or health alerts set up for email alerts. And that's pretty much all the configuration that you want to do post installation. Before we wrap up this video, let's go back and check the status of our system updates. So it looks like the first tab, which we had the product updates running, is already completed. You can see it was success. Download update succeeded. We got two new updates. And the first one is for the source fire vulnerability and fingerprint database updates. And you can see that if you, it also tells you that if you're trying to apply it right now, the reboot would not be required as opposed to the second update, which is for the source fire defense center patch. And this is the latest patch, I supposed. And it tells you that if you apply it right now, the reboot will be required. So we're gonna go ahead and actually do this in the separate video, so we're not doing it right now. So that's for the product updates. It looks like our rule updates is still running. And let me see if I can show you. Oh, let's use different tabs so we don't change that. Just to see uh, some activity, I think we're supposed to go back and check the task status for our geolocation update as well. So let's do that. All right, so for our task status, it looks like it's been completed. Oh, actually, no, uh, let me see. Oh, the download itself, uh, activity, the download activity has been successfully completed, as you can see here. And then as soon as it downloaded it, it trying to apply or install the database. So it looks like that's what's running right now. Okay, now, I think this one is under system monitoring and audit. As you can see that we actually do have some activities uh, during our intrusion rule updates here. You can see the audit log has been filled. 
with all these activities. So when you perform the intrusion rule updates, just keep in mind that all of these are happening in the background, which is if there's new rules that's been available, it will be created. As you can see right here that the policies intrusion rule editor submenu is being accessed. Right? And you can just refresh on that. You can see that this was uh, still running as far as the intrusion update. And you can tell that it's a system user because the user is default user as opposed to what we just performed. Just now for checking the task status, the user is admin. So you can actually see the difference between the two. Okay, so it looks like the tab under the rule update stopped spinning already. Okay, so popped over there. You can see now that the update has been completed. We've been presented with the rule update import log. And these are all the changes that have been made to the system as far as the intrusion rule updates. And let's see what else uh, we have here. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see that there's over 2,000, actually almost 3,000 rows of, uh, of these type of logs that's been generated. Okay, so at this point, our system should be up to date. And we actually also started looking through some of the web interface and configure part of it that's relevant to the system as well, such as the health policy, system policy, and all the alerting methods. But we're definitely going to be spending a lot more time walking you guys through the web interface later on in the introduction to the Farsight web interface video. And that should wrap up our video on ASA Firepower Farsight basic configuration. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.